Our first reading this morning is from the Buddhist concept of Gathas. And I wrote this Gatha for us today. And it is as follows. You are filled with love and you are filled with kindness and you are here today because of this. Together may we become one with the spirit in each of us to live a life of loving kindness. And as we breathe in, we breathe in unconditional love for others and for ourselves. And as we breathe out, we breathe out compassion, grace, forgiveness, humility. May we each find that loving kindness is a true way to live and to be in this world, and that this gift to one another is inexhaustible. We'll be silent for a moment together. So our first reading this morning is a couple of Gothas. And I thank Jenny Allen who wrote these, which were adapted in her recent July 25th New York Magazine piece. There's probably one or two in here that may resonate for you. Jenny says, breathing in, I lovingly do the dishes. Aware of their usefulness in holding nourishing meals that have sustained me and my family for years. Breathing out, I wonder why is it always me doing the dishes alone by myself? Breathing in, I think about the interconnectedness of us all. This being one exception, and ever hopeful that someday, someone, somewhere will sense my need and offer to help. And I open myself to the possibility of this miracle. Her second gatha speaks to the Buddhist principle of impermanence. Breathing in, I dial zero to report a prank call that I just received and I hope that the operator picks up soon. Then I remember there are no more operators anymore. Breathing out, I use this moment to reflect on how everything is changed and how impermanent life truly is. And then I remind myself lovingly of the bygone days and the things that I used to complain about but now kind of miss. Rockefeller Republicans, airplane meals, Times Square when it was nasty, and the guys at construction sites in Manhattan who used to whistle at me when I passed by. We gather here this morning as stewards of this sacred meeting house, rich in his heritage. It was last month that Reverend Kate, our wonderfully loving minister and kind minister, gave a sermon about August Itis here in Provincetown, and it was called Rage. Rage. I love it. It got me thinking about my own practice of keeping on an August Itis at bay, which is not always easy in a tourist town. And Kate made the comparison to senioritis, afflicting those graduating from high school. They show up, but they don't really care anymore, and they're not really fully engaged for those last few weeks. Now that I can remember and could easily relate to. And I'm older now, I'm not in high school anymore, and I'm supposed to be a little bit wiser and more in control about when I'm about ready to toss the towel in my, the towel of kindness in on myself and others. 
but it's always work to do. I've been a practicer, practitioner of meditation now since I was in college. Don't do that. <laughs> I found that spending some time sitting on the cushion purposefully and without interruption really had some positive effects on my life. I learned how to slow down some, and I learned to worry a bit less, and I practiced kind of like a pianist does and gets better with each session, or a physician does and hopefully gets better with each patient she or he sees. And then it was some years ago that I learned about the practice of meditating on loving kindness. And it has come in handy more than once. You know, like when I'm sitting in traffic late for an important or what I thought was an important appointment, and the person ahead of me seems to have all the time in the world checking their hair out in a mirror and talking on his or her cell phone, and there I am, like, late, late, late. Well, I've learned a lot of those moments of, about myself, my ego, my needs, and that there is always more work to be done, as we say in our practices. Like, had I been the one in traffic time or two checking myself out in the mirror to make sure those pesky poppy seeds weren't stuck between my teeth before I went to meet someone? Had I been wrapped in some unnecessary cell call while the person behind me was probably seething? And how many times in places near and far away was I the person that I might complain about who's having their own personal Augustitis in any month of the year? And I know that I am as guilty as can be. I remember driving down the road and I switched on my right hand blinker and then all of a sudden Oh my God, I had to turn left or I was going to think that like, if I missed the next left, I'd be lost for like 10 miles and I'd be off course, but I'd never get back. So, I was the jerk for that. And so when the shoe is on the other foot, I have learned to breathe and to be more compassionate and to see the humanness of each other because life really is just one big mirror sometimes, isn't it, to show us who we are? Reverend Kate's sermon got me to think a little bit deeper about what is at the bottom of these feelings, these emotions, my behaviors. And for that, I am truly grateful. Because loving kindness is manifested in so many different ways and I believe brought into our lives in just as many more. It has many names. Grace, mercy, forgiveness, service, generosity, benevolence, compassion, gratitude, even manners. And there are so many liturgical and religious inspirations for allowing loving kindness to make itself known in our own lives. St. Francis of Assisi said, for it is in giving that we receive. Khalil Gibran says, Generosity is giving more than you can, and pride is taking less than you need. In the Jewish tradition, there's this lovely verse that I found that said, the world is held together by three things, the law, worship, and showing kindness to each other. And one of the other favorite ones that I found came from the Islamic tradition. It states, treat people in such a kind way 
and live amongst them in such a kind manner that when you die, they will weep over you, and when you are alive, they will crave for your company. When I was reading up for today, I love finding all the roots of loving kindness in words from all the world's great religions. Buddha's, Buddhism often talks about Maitri, which literally translated from the Sanskrit means love or loving kindness. And the word Maitri itself has its word, has its roots in the word friend. I just love that loving kindness and friendship seem to go, to go together. Don't you? There was a story from the Talmud that said, Rabbi Yohanan ben Zaki was returning from Jerusalem when he met another rabbi named Joshua. Joshua cried out to Rabbi Yohanan, Oh, is to us the temple is in ruins. Our holy place where the inequities of Israel were atoned for it is laid to waste. Rabbi Yohanan said to the younger rabbi, My son, be not grieved, for we have a stronger atonement than this. It is acts of loving kindness. This was from Hosea 6.6. .6. I could go on, but I think you get the, the point. There are so many other people who have inspired me about loving kindness along the way on my path. John Kevin Zinn and his book, Loving Kindness, The Revolutionary Art of Happiness. I just love that phrase, the art of happiness. There was Cammie Walker. She wrote the book, 29 Gifts, How a Month of Giving and change your life. And I loved her phrase when she said, the best way to create your own happiness is to simply give and to be kind to others. Isn't that so true? Here in our congregation, we have exemplified loving kindness in so many different ways. We've opened up our doors to AA groups, al -Anon groups, and Narcanon groups to the organizations in town who want to use this space. And it was back in the early 20th century when we have coffee downstairs at AB Hall that it was a veritable hospital ward when we opened up our doors for those afflicted by and suffering from uh, the terrible disease of the Spanish influenza. It makes me proud to be part of this congregation, and I like to think of it as our congregational kindness. It's where our own <coughs> manifested love comes together through our deeds. Now, my favorite early childhood memories about loving and understanding the different, but understanding the different ways of love and kindness um, and how they break in through our world. Well, most of those memories come through my mother. I brought a picture of my mom with me today to inspire me a little bit. As a kid, I can still vividly remember when I was 10, 1963, President Kennedy had just been assassinated my brother Jackie had taken his own life at the age of 26. And there were so many things seared into my mind at that age. Well, my mother took me to Hartford and we were on our way to get a new Easter sports coat for that following spring. I got one every other year when my other brothers hand me down and fit me. And there was a sale at G. Fox and Company, and my mom and I were on the big bus to the big city, and I will never, ever forget it. We were midway between New Britain and Hartford. Hartford was like Oz to me when I was a kid. 
And the bus stopped to pick up a couple more passengers in Nguyen Chang. And Mom leaned over me and she said, Billy, why don't you give that nice older woman your seat? My mother may have been thinking about manners, but what I think was she was teaching me about kindness. And when Ruth spoke, Billy obeyed. <laughs> And I can still come and recount so many other times she taught me in large ways and small that loving kindness does have so many faces and names. Like when she'd say, as the sirens were piercing my ears as an ambulance went by, she would say, Billy, let's say a little prayer for whoever is in the back going to the hospital, okay? And then there's last but not least, it was my seventh grade high school dance. God, I remember it so well because we had just moved this new town. We were living in my grandmother's apartment and we had finally gotten our own. And Ma was a chaperone and dance organizer that year. And I'm pretty sure it was my mother's way of keeping an eye on me while she was meeting some of the other mothers. And about halfway through the evening, she came over and she put around her arm around my shoulder and she said, How are you doing? What I remember is that I was just trying to blend into the wall. I didn't know anybody. I had just moved there. I was sure I would never fit in. And so I was trying to be the a wallflower. And then I heard voice saying, Billy, go ask that girl to dance, why don't you? She was looking so seriously, seriously at me and nodding her head in the girl's direction. It was really more of a mom command than a question. But Ma, I protested, that girl's in a wheelchair. And my mother said, and so? I would like to thank you and the worship committee for this opportunity today. And also wish Reverend Kate and Lisa Bergeron we were married yesterday and what I'm sure was an absolutely beautiful, wonderful ceremony, all the love and kindness in the world. And we have enriched our spiritual experience together this morning by sharing in community and in worship our joys and our concerns. And thank you for contributing, all of you, for our time together today. And as Shar said, we invite you downstairs for uh, refreshments, coffee, and conversation. And maybe we can find the woman who the man who spoke earlier today is looking for. Um, our closing hymn will be, and I'm pretty sure you all know this song, What the World Needs Now is Love.